Hush. Hush. <laughs> You gotta be nice to the ex car audio guy. I'm surprised you don't want to do it yourself. Open that one to me. Oh, it's loose. Okay, so you got to make sure you disconnect the wires that go to your auxiliary switches. Without breaking it, what's bye bye? What the hell? You record your drives? Yeah, every drive. Every drive, every time I have a dash cam that records, because you never know when someone's going to do something stupid. So that comes out. That leaves your two wires that went to the back of that. We hand him back his drill. <laughs> <laughs> magnetic sockets. If you're going to do this part, make sure you use magnetic sockets. That makes it a whole lot more easy. Sometimes you guys lose them. Two screws down below that takes the console loose. Yeah, that safe in there makes it very heavy. Is there screws on the back side here? Yeah, there's screws on the back side right here. This. That's what I missed. Careful of the little clips that you don't scratch your trim. And it comes out. Kind of. All the extra wires I ran, holy shit. Good thing they're there, huh? That piece goes into the back. Get it out of the way. Nobody sees this because this doesn't really hear. And that's all you have to do. Slide the console back about three to four inches. Oh, 
What's that? Something's coming in the office. Oh, because there's no, no additional. I've got to get this done today. Stuff's come in. Sometimes it's hard to remember where all the screws go when we get all done. You want extras? Seems like we always do. Oh yeah, this is only necessary if you're running wires from the front camera. And those, those would be normally. I think just a standard Phillips, which is across there, which are those screws have to be removed. You can see that just pops out. That's been removed. One there, which is a... You can pull it out. So you got that piece out. And again, this is why you want to use a magnetic tip screwdriver. Or magnetic trip nut driver. So you don't lose these screws. Uh-oh, that's how you lose the screws. Remove the faceplate. That's what it looks like when you're looking for the screw you lost. Screw went down there somewhere. just shows you that it isn't always easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, now there's this uh, rubber plug that goes in this hole back here. It always, sometimes can get really 
Let me see if I can turn it around. See that indentation? Yeah. That's where it sits inside there. So sometimes you can get really wedged in there and really okay. hard to get out. Hand this to you back here. All right. Well, there it is. Out. Uh, where's your nav TV piece? The nav TV piece is sitting on the workbench. Look, we read directions. See directions, directions. We're not using any of these. Here, input, input, yeah, that's a data of some sort. Output, in, okay, so these are all inputs and outputs, so we don't need any of these. So, all we gotta do is just extend those two wires and run them in. Sounds easy, extend those two wires and run them in. The connectors are pretty much self explanatory, they'll only go one way. I'm cutting this off is because when you hide these plugs, you pull on that and they go back in the dash. So there's going to be a little bit of slack in here. Try not to cut any of the wires. That's alright, it's just your car. This has to plug into here. It's key different. Okay, so you can only put it in one way. Is that just a relay they have in there? <clears throat> Pretty much, yeah. It's just an internal relay. You're taking my instructions when you got a pair in your hand. That sounds simple enough once you decipher the instructions. Right. So an update on the harness is that we're you need input three. Output three. Or output three. White with purple. White with purple. To tie into the red. On the GPS antenna. On the GPS antenna, red and black. And ground. And then you need to ground the black wire. Then provide me with the ground. So I think I have chassis ground at best. Is that what that said? Yeah, uh, RCA's okay. plug back into each other. Sure why. It says the RCAs plug back into each other, back into themselves, unless you're using a rear seat entertainment system. So this is a pass through. All right, so that's output three right here, the white with purple, which gets that red wire from the uh, navigation antenna. So you might want to get some bullet connectors because they plug right in. This is where we are with the modules. Okay, so mention we ran a wire. Oh yeah, I don't know if you want to show that. The wires are ran, ran a wire under the dash, came out through the engine compartment. It's right there, comes through the little rubber grommet that they have down in there. Okay, so you should get a green light on the module when you plug it in. See, we got a green light. Now I'm actually going to cut this because I want to put this in a spot in case when you get the USB. How long have we 
if I can. Well, I'm limited on length. The only thing that's limiting me on length is this right here. I'm not sure how far I want to lengthen it yet. So I'm just going to tie it up to the wire. Try and drop the brain. better to just drop the cable. Right there. That's actually probably a pretty good length. Just to plug the brain in down here. So if you ever need to, you can just pull this panel down and get to the USB port for an update without taking the whole truck apart. the uh, satellite antenna. You then just slide the whole thing in place. This is where you pick up your gray and violet wire going up to the camera under the hood. You can see the wire goes up, feeds up to the camera that's now, of course, above us because the hood's open. But right there is where we come through underneath in the firewall. And you come up there and you pick up the gray violet wire. Okay, so we're all done tying in underneath the hood, soldered and connected. On the dash, behind the box. Something about holding the... Here's what you see so far and warming everything up. the camera so there's the camera looking at the sky because the hood's open
Now, is that just how we always turn it on? The active steering lines will not be displayed. The cluster will display press OK to disable. Why are these ones on then? Yeah, they're on. Because we're in 4x2. And we have the camera lines. Interesting. That's weird. It says the active steering lines will not be displayed. The cluster will display press OK to disable. To disable front camera, make sure the center cl the cluster is on the camera option screen. Press OK. Automatically switch to reverse. Yep. Go forward. Back to front camera. Looks like it's working. Looks like. this on first you then just slide the whole thing in place that's what it was Camera, door, jar, door, jar, door, jar. Hey, look at that, we got front camera. Now can we turn on rear camera? Uh, <laughs> how do you do that? How do you do that? There, you go. there, it, is. there it is, okay. okay. You gotta disable the camera. So you have to disable camera. The front camera. You have to disable the front camera to force the rear camera. However, if you put it in reverse, that overrides the front camera. Yeah. So if we turn the front camera on, and then put it in reverse, in reverse it immediately it overrides it. But if we go back to front camera, we have pictures showing we can't access the rear. So we have to go to disable the camera, camera off, off hit the then button. defrost button twice, and the camera come back up, the rear camera comes on. Perfect. All right. Well, looks like it's all functional. Interesting to say the least on the install. Help. I'm sure we'll get a bunch of questions. Okay.